Hello everyone, I am the lucky, or maybe unlucky some might say, owner of two Valbon smooth panning oil damped heads, the PH358 and the PH368. Now at first glance they're pretty similar, they're both made out of plastic, they're both lightweight, but the 358 is a lot narrower and smaller than the 368, and the trifle plate is smaller as well so that they're not interchangeable they both fit in the same way with a nice snap there and the handles are identical you can loosen those off and rotate them to different angles which is very convenient and put them on backwards um, they're also the actual handle itself is conveniently hollow so you can put in a bit of extra wood to add an extension to the control which is very handy if you're sitting down in front of a tripod and you Want to sort of sit back and control. It's also good for very fine, slow panning and tilting. The 368 here is wider and it also has a larger diameter than the 358, so the friction area of the oil damped bit washer in here is going to be bigger, so in theory that should be smoother. In my experience, I can't really feel any difference between the smoothness of the two, they both feel very similar and quite smooth but, and this is the big but, there's a lot of wobble in here I mean if I put my thumbnail in, in that gap there I can feel that's, that's really moving and if you're zoomed in close to something on a very long lens that little bit of movement is going to be massive on screen, it's really going to show up plus when you get to the end of a, a tilt and you let go you can get some bounce back which is a real problem, that's just negates the whole point of having a, a smooth tilting panning head. So that's my big complaint. The other big difference between the 368 and 358 is this friction control here. And that can solve all your problems with, with that wobbly head. If you get that tight enough, and that's a ridiculous, the ridiculous thing to try and tighten with your fingers, it's pretty painful. And to actually get it tight enough you'll need some pliers. I was finding with a a fairly hefty lens like I've got in here, which is a 7200 Sigma and a GH2 on the back. That's about 1.8 kilograms of, of lens and camera. Not massively heavy and well within the, the weight limits of this head, I'd say. But if I had that back in an angle like that, I was finding it's just starting to tip. <laughs> and um, so you kind of stop on the shots and then you find suddenly the camera's gradually drifted up and pointed at the ceiling, which is not good. But with the help of some pliers I've really tightened that up a lot and now it's it's actually staying where it's put. But if I ever want to loosen that thing off again I'm going to have to get some pliers out because I'm going to kind of rip holes in my fingers otherwise. They all have a lock-off bolt as well but I'm not really keen on using the lock-off bolt to, um, to add friction. I want the lock-off bolt to actually lock the lens in position and you have to put a lot of tightness on that to actually lock the lens in position as well. You can see on this one, it's taken a knock and um, that pan lock has, has been snapped, so they're clearly not particularly solid. That said, they're pretty lightweight and they're very cheap. To buy a decent Manfrotto head, you'd be paying the price of a tripod and the heads and probably some more stuff as well to get, get the equivalent. Or if you're buying something even more expensive, you're paying lots and lots of money and you'll probably need an enormous heavy tripod to carry it on to. So if you're after cheap and light, go for Velmon. But they're not good heads, but they're good enough. Thanks for listening and happy filming.